Joanna Canals worked a long time putting this story together because while the action on the field can be inspiring, uh -huh. really it's what goes on off the field, the story, the background of success yeah. that'll touch your heart. Yeah, the backstory of uh, left tackle Garrett Bowles is amazing. Mm. I'm I'm a little nervous for this today because he's a good friend of mine, good friend of the family, and his story inspires me. It was a childhood filled with addiction, jail time, and darkness, as Garrett put it. He says he was headed down the wrong road that culminated with his dad kicking him out of the house at age 18. All his belongings were out on the driveway, and then his lacrosse coach drove by and changed his life forever. Who do you love? Dada. And who, who plays them all? Dada. Who's the best? Dada. Yeah. To understand the enormity of this moment, you have to go back. I, I felt like nobody loved me, um, nobody cared for me, and I was just sort of a lost soul. Bronco's left tackle Garrett Bowles came from a family unimaginable to most. My mother struggled with lots of addiction things. My father was in the military, struggled with a lot of issues with their. I struggled with a learning disability and a lot of things, um, you know, had the wrong group of friends, struggled with drugs and alcohol at a very young age. And I had to learn to, um, to fight my demons um, head on. When he was 18, his dad kicked him out of the house, and Garrett's life would change forever that night when his lacrosse coach drove by. His stuff was literally on the curb, which was about a duffel bag and a couple of their small suitcases in the backpack, and drove by, and I said, Garrett, what's going on? He said, well, I just got kicked out of my house. My dad's done with me. And I said, okay, well, that's... Kind of crazy. I just felt a really strong confirmation that we were supposed to bring Garrett home. I turned my phone in at night. I had, to, I had to go to church. I had to get rid of all my old friends. We wrote out a little contract and he signed his name and we hung it on his closet doors. If this story is sounding familiar, you may remember the story of left tackle Michael Orr for the Baltimore Ravens depicted on the big screen in the blind side. Do you have any place to stay tonight? Don't you dare lie to me. That movie actually came out right in the midst of this journey for us. We got about halfway into that movie and I can remember just sobbing. I thought to myself, okay, if that boy could change and that family could help him, then maybe the same could be true for us. Garrett's biggest change came after graduating high school and serving a mission for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints for two years in Colorado Springs. I learned all the people I taught were people that struggled with drugs and alcohol or, you know, have substance abuse or, you know, came from, you know, terrible backgrounds of family and, you know, didn't feel like they were loved. As much as I touched them, they touched my life yeah. um, because I realized I was doing something good and I knew that this helped me grow up to become the man I am today. As he was helping others, dreams of playing for the NFL were always in the back of his mind. Yeah, I was just telling Chris and Ken uh, that Garrett never played football really in high school and wasn't even eligible to get into college uh, through the NCAA, but uh, we're gonna have the best part of this story. It comes next as Garrett uses his past to help other teens. And remember this iconic draft footage of Garrett getting drafted by the Broncos, holding up his baby? Well, there is more to that story told by his mother. So we'll have that coming up in just a few minutes with part two of Garrett's story. We'll be right back.